Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sherry and this is Gardening in the North. And today I want to talk about three big mistakes that all gardeners make at some point. It doesn't matter what experience level you are, these are the mistakes that we all make. And to be completely honest with you, I just made one of them yesterday. So let's take a look at those mistakes and see if we can avoid them going forward. So the first mistake that I think every single gardener has made or will make is not observing their property or their gardening space long enough before actually planting something in it. And what I mean by that is being aware of the sun, knowing what areas get the most sun and planting accordingly. So we all know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. We know that. But that doesn't always help you when you're trying to plant something out there that needs a lot of sun. And so what I mean by that is behind me is my hill garden. Now when we first moved to this property, this was all grass. This was not a garden and we had to mow it. And luckily enough, and I don't know why, but this didn't have a tree line. And the minute that I saw this area, I thought to myself, garden. So what I did is I started creating a 10 by 20 gardening area. And about 20 feet in front of that area, I planted two apple trees because that's what you do, right? You plant trees. So after about a year, I realized that my 10 by 20 gardening area was slowly inching or quickly inching towards those apple trees and that eventually those apple trees were going to be in my way and I had to move them. So the next fall or the next spring, I came out here, decided that I was going to dig them up and replant them. One of them did not make it through the winter. The other one looked good, looked like it was going to thrive and make it through. So I decided that I would move that one. So I took probably about a week and kind of surveyed, you know, the, the backyard and the front yard to really, I guess, decide where was going to be the best possible place for that tree, knowing that I was going to have to plant more in order for it to be pollinated. So in that week, I decided that the front yard would be perfect. The front yard is somewhat um, rolling. There's, there's some hills there and I thought we don't really use the front yard. I'll plant some apple trees there, some fruit trees, and it'll be perfect. So let's take a look over where I decided to plant that apple tree and why that was the biggest mistake ever. The tree line that I'm showing you right now is on the west side of our property. And so you can see that there are some openings between the trees and I really wanted to start filling those in a bit. And not because I don't like my neighbors, I like them fine. We just wanted to have a little bit more privacy as well as to not be able to see their pool from our property. So what I did is <laughs> I looked out here, saw that there was great sun out here and thought this little apple tree would do great here. And it's not doing bad. It does have some, some leaves on it. Um, it. It is coming back fairly good. However, there aren't any buds on it. Not like the ones that I planted in the fall. The ones in the fall that I planted have tons of buds. This one here is a four year old tree and it is a lot smaller than those ones. Now I want to draw your attention to the tree next to it. So when I planted that little apple tree or transplanted it from the hill garden area into this area, this tree here did not have any of these leaves on it. And even now I'm showing you all the leaves that are on it. Um, this is nothing compared to what it's gonna be like a month from now. So when I planted this little apple tree here, it was 
I think mid-April. And so of course there weren't any leaves on that tree. Like I said, a month from now, that tree is gonna be covered in leaves and my little apple tree will not get any sun the way I thought it would. So that is mistake number one, not observing the area long enough. Had I just waited two to three more weeks and realized that, you know, yeah, that's a great spot, except that once all the leaves came in, that tree was not going to get the sun that it needed. So it is on my list this year to move that tree. Now, I want to make note that I have a YouTube channel and it's on gardening. You know that, you're watching it. However, I'm also human and every gardener out there is going to make mistakes and they're gonna make the same mistakes a few times and that's okay. But I think that the important lesson from not observing my space properly is sharing it with you. So let's move on to mistake number two. I think that the second biggest mistake that a lot of gardeners make is rushing their projects. So you might have a garden space that you want to create or revamp, whatever it is. It is in our nature to finish that project check it off the list and move on. But I'm here to tell you that it is better to start that project, sit on it for a little while and decide what else you wanna do with that. And what I mean by that is when we first moved here four years ago, we had a garden to the north of the side door that we use to enter our home every day and it was a mess. There wasn't anything in it that I liked and I really wanted to redo it, revamp it. And it was on my list of things to do. So I started looking around the property first to see what I could uh, propagate or just move. And there was a garden in our backyard, a standalone garden in the middle of the yard that had all these flowers growing out of it and it was basically in the way of being able to play soccer, frisbee, whatever you wanted to do and it had to go. So I came in and started digging up some of those plants. I tried to remember what had been there um, a few months previously, what flowers I had seen and made the decision that I would use some of those flowers and move them because I didn't want that garden anymore and move it to the side door garden. Mistake number two for me because had I waited until the spring and waited to see and observe what was going on in that standalone garden and did some research on the plants that were in there, I would have realized that the plant that I moved was very invasive. And thankfully, I only moved it to two different places on our property that aren't gonna cause me a lot of trouble. But let's take a look. I wanna show you the side garden. I wanna show you where, where I planted that, that particular plant and how it's starting already at the beginning of spring to take over. So I'm speaking of these back flowers that are growing up here. Now I can tell you that I only planted three there. I can also tell you that these, or this particular plant, and I'm really not sure what kind it is, actually grow to be about three feet tall and they overhang into the garden, covering up the rest of what I have in here. And so there is probably 20 of them there now. And like I said, I only planted three of them. So mistake number two could have been avoided for me had I done the research on which 
plants and which species of plants I had here on the property when we moved here. The really scary thing about this is that, you know, I got lucky. This is just a side garden. It gets pretty jungly in there by June and I really do need to go in and I actually trim that particular plant right down to the ground level um, and that seems to help a little bit but I really did get lucky. Just think if I had transplanted something as invasive as say the comfrey plant some comfrey is so invasive that you can't get rid of it. So I'm just going to really stress to you that, you know, you want to avoid making mistake number two and do your research. So mistake number three, I think, is made by a lot of gardeners more than once. I can tell you that I made this mistake yesterday. So I went out to a couple local garden centers trying to find some really cool plants that I could plant into a big barrel for my mom for Mother's Day. Now, like every other gardener, like every other gardener out there, I had a mission to go into the garden center to look for plants for my Mother's Day present but my eyes started to wander. And I came across this. And at first I was like, what is that? Why are they growing this huge weed in that container? And I looked at the tag and it's a Queen Alexandria Oriental Poppy. And I thought to myself, I need to have this. So this is what it looks like here. So I get it home. I actually bought two of them. I got them home and I think, where am I going to plant this? And I think my food forest. I want to plant this in the food forest because even though it's a food forest with fruit trees and fruit bushes and, some, and a ton of perennials, I also want it to look pretty. And how cool is it to have poppies growing in the food forest? So I get home, I actually position out the plants that I purchased, because this wasn't the only one, where I want them. Because I think that that could be a possible mistake. Number four, planting too soon. So anyways, I lay them out where I want them. I leave them there. I come back later on, I look, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, they look good there. And then I was talking to somebody and I mentioned to them that I had bought these amazing poppy plants. And the first thing he says to me is, you know that they're poisonous to dogs. And I went, say what? And he said, well, I believe that most poppy plants are poisonous. And some of them are less than others. However, I believe all of them are poisonous to dogs. And I thought, oh my, I've never had to think about that before, but we have puppy Jacks and we've had him for two months. And I just went out and purchased two plants that could possibly kill him if I plant them and leave them out here. And I thought, Sherry, why would you buy plants without doing your research on them first? I usually, pull out my phone and I will search them up and just make sure that they are edible, to make sure that they're perennials, to make sure whatever I'm looking for in that particular plant, I'll research it. And for whatever reason, I did not do that yesterday. And I now have two poppy plants that I can't plant because I can't take the risk. One, that our puppy will come into this area and even bite on it, eat it, whatever it might be. So, you know, mistake number three is always do your research on the plants that you're buying and make sure that they are exactly what you need and not necessarily a want item. And that's my problem, right? When you go into a garden store, you aren't necessarily thinking about what you need. You are thinking wide-eyed on what you 
want. And I can't stress enough that you need to ensure that you do your research. Going forward, I will not purchase another plant that I am not familiar with without making sure that I research it to see if it is poisonous to dogs. I hope all of these tips and tricks have helped you. I hope that by explaining some of the mistakes that I've made, maybe that'll help you to avoid making those exact same mistakes and you won't have to dig up your apple tree and trim back an invasive plant and find somebody without a dog that wants a poppy plant. Thanks for spending time with me.